All right, in this video, we're gonna be palpating the upper trapezius. So we're gonna be starting on the origin of upper trapezius, and I'm on his occipital bone currently right now. And if you palpate up into the back of the hairline here, you usually come across a fairly large bump. This is known as your external occipital protuberance, short form to EOP of the occipital bone. And then just off lateral to it, you should feel a bony ridge. So this is known as your superior nuchal line of the occipital bone. So trapezius attaches to the EOP and the medial third of that superior nuchal line of the occipital bone. The next attachment is actually soft tissue, and this is known as the nuchal ligament. So as I start to palpate distal from the EOP, and we're heading towards the cervical spine here, you will not typically be able to palpate it, but it's this connective tissue ligamentous band that runs all the way down towards cervical seven. So the nuchal ligament is a soft tissue attachment for upper traps. As I count my way down here, I'm basically going to be palpating all of the spinous process of the cervical just to make sure that I end up on cervical spine number seven. So the transverse spinous process, pardon me, of cervical two is going to be the first one that we come across. So that is right in here. Since C1 does not have a spinous process, I'm going to count down and find three, four, five, six, and then seven. So the spinous process of cervical seven is also known as the cervical prominence, since it is the largest spinous process of the cervical spine. Now to confirm that I'm on cervical seven, what I'm gonna be doing is placing one finger pad on what I believe is the spinous process of cervical seven, and one finger pad on the vertebrae below that, which is I'm hoping is thoracic one. Cervical seven should have more mobility from it since thoracic one has ribs attached to it through by way of the vertebrae. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate his head in the cradle and what I'm feeling underneath that index finger is that basically the spinous process is rotating back and forth. So therefore confirming that this is cervical number seven. So again, the origin of upper trapezius is the external occipital protuberance and superior nuchal line of the occipital bone, the nuchal ligament or ligamentum nuchae, and the spinous process of cervical seven. The muscle fibers are gonna run out lateral, folding up on themselves and attaching, first of all, here along that superior lateral third of the clavicle. And then as we go a little bit more lateral than that, on the acromion process of the scapula. So I'm gonna ask my partner just to elevate his shoulder, good, as I'm palpating and separating that trapezius muscle. And you can follow that all the way out to its two insertions. Now I'm gonna follow that back up. So I'm scooping and lifting it up a little bit, plus using my thumb to help separate upper and middle traps. And I'm gonna round this corner and follow it right back up towards the occipital bone. Now trapezius often gets a little too much credit in the back of the neck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a bilateral. So I'm gonna cut both sides here. And as I fold my fingers in, this is about the width of trapezius into the back of the neck. So it's only about an inch, inch and a half wide. The actions for upper trapezius are twofold on the scapula as well as on the head. So for the scapula, it's gonna be elevation as well as upward rotation and a retraction motion. So if you're able to bring this acromion all the way up towards your ear for me, good, and then back down. And then on the head, we're gonna to try to bring our external occipital protuberance towards the acromion. So that would do some contralateral rotation some extension of both head and neck, as well as lateral flexion towards the side, making this somewhat of a complicated full action for this muscle. Excellent. So that's gonna conclude our palpation of upper trapezius.